Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of Let's Taste with the Intrepid Wino. My name is James Scarcebrook and um, a, a listener of my podcast, uh, a guy by the name of Phil, uh, Phil Jones, uh, who is the cell door manager uh, for the winery uh, that I'm profiling in this video. Got in contact with me a little while ago and uh, very generously sent me some samples. Um, and it's for a winery in the Hunter Valley. Uh, the specific, I think the specific area is known as Broke Ford, Fordwich, Fordwich. Just correct me on the pronunciation if I've got it wrong. Um, uh, Glenguin Estate, uh, which <coughs> I believe is, um, it's a vineyard of Robin, Robin Tedder, Master of Wine. Um, apparently did very well we uh, very recently in the Halliday Companion 2017 edition uh, for their Shiraz wines, which I'll actually be tasting on a separate video. Um, and so I'm, I'm really excited to try some wines from an estate. I've never had wines from Glenwood Estate. Uh, and I also really don't have much wine from uh, New South Wales, let alone the Hunter Valley. So uh, quite exciting to open up these wines. Uh, as you can see, they're all under screw caps. So without further ado, let's jump straight into it with the 2015 uh, Glenguin Vineyard uh, Semion recommended retail is twenty seven fifty. Um, Semion, of course, probably the famous white variety uh, for the Hunter Valley. Uh, a lot of good Chardonnays also from the region, but Semion is the, is uh, the Hunter Valley is kind of considered well, kind of it is. Considered to be the best region for Simeon in Australia and also one of the best regions for outside of uh, France. So, um, Simeon uh, made sort of in two styles uh, fresh, young, um, we, or, or you know, sort of more complex, and then released later because it does age very well in bottle. So, let's have a look at the 2015. There is some nice fruit on the nose. I have found that Hunter Semyon can be, in, in its youth, very neutral. It needs the bottle age, but there's some good fruit here. You know, like very, like, pear, approaching sort of apricot, but not too ripe. Probably more in the orchard fruit realm, apple, pear, that kind of thing. There's a little bit of a lazy influence as well. It's got an, uh, just a slight sort of pithiness, which I like. Let's taste. A little bit lighter on the palate, quite lean, um, very fresh. The fruit is consistent with, uh, with a nose on the palate. Um, definitely in that sort of pear, nashy, kind of realm. Um, it's very refreshing, it, it's it's nice drinking, but I think it's probably not really showing a lot of character at the moment. It probably would be interesting to have a look at a wine like this with sort of five to ten years of bottle age to see how it does evolve because, you know, as I mentioned, Hunter Valley Semyon can be on the neutral side uh, and this, to a certain extent, has that characteristic. It's, it's, it's pretty light and fresh. Uh, I would assume in an unoak style. Yeah, it's it's nice. It's very good. There's sort of a, a, a borderline musky floral sort of fruit sweetness, but it's, it's very very delicate. Um, but yeah, I think it probably could do with some bottle age to see some, a little bit more evolution of the wine. Uh, the next wine I'm going to look at is the Ironbark Tanat 2013. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the Tanat variety, which is probably quite likely, it's a, a fairly obscure grape anywhere, let alone Australia. Um, Tanat is a variety that comes from uh, the southwest of France, uh, fairly close to the Pyrenees and the kind of Basque area. Um, it's a fairly marginal variety, but 
one of the places that it's, it's now fairly well renowned is in Uruguay, in South America. It's kind of considered to be the national grape. Um, and you do see Tanat in different pockets around the world. It's good to see in Australia. I like Tanat um, partly because it's, it's a palindrome, which is cool. Um, but also uh, it is um, a, a more tannic. I like, the I like the name Tanat because it indicates tannin. Titanic. Um, so I'm interested to see how Glengwin Estate uh, has sort of um, choose, chosen to express their Tanat wine. This is a recommended retail of $30. Yeah, nice, dark, juicy, um, but also a little bit savory, earthy aromas. Like sort of nice, sour, Blood plum kind of thing. Really dark pomegranate notes. A little bit of floral, but it's more in that sort of earthy, savory realm. Let's taste. It's not super heavy. There is some nice intensity. It's it's uh, it's quite expressive in the mid palate. Um, the, the, there is some concentration to the tannins, which I like, but it's not aggressive. However, it's also not kind of sort of plush and mellow. It's not simple. Uh, it's not broad. There is sort of some focus to it. Um, on the palate, it's sort of moving a little more towards some red fruits rather than the darker fruits. Um, it's quite sort of bloody. Uh, it reminds me a little bit of, you know, some really classic Italian Sangiovese in a way. Uh, I really like this. It's, it's very nice. It's, if you like um, a, a slightly more intense tannic style, but not too aggressive, um, I, I recommend this tanner. It's, uh, it's actually pretty good for $30. Uh, and certainly it's very interesting. I like to see alternative varieties. Part of the reason I'm heading to the Alternative Varieties Wine Show Finish off with we have uh, the sticky 2014 Botrytized Semillon. Um, I've tasted a few sweeter wines here on Let's Taste. Um, <clears throat> uh, Botrytis, uh, if I haven't already explained, is basically um, a product of um, humidity. Um, it's a it's a fungus that uh, you know a, a, a sort of a rot of the grapes. Um, now you would think that rot is a bad thing, but uh, if, it's, if it's healthy, it sort of, it, it basically um, breaks down the skin and, uh, and the grape sort of shrivels and that concentrates the sugars, uh, making for some lovely kind of rich, uh, intense sweetness. Um, some of the best examples of botrytized wines Indeed, Botrytis Semillon and Sauvignon Blanc are in the um, in Bordeaux, in Sauterne uh, and Barsac, um, and they might make you know a number of passes through the vineyard, only selecting the Botrytis berries off each, off each bunch and allowing the remaining berries to you know go through that Botrytis uh, period. Um, it's part of the reason why it's so expensive. There's sort of a steeliness to this wine. It doesn't immediately smack of, um, of sweetness of a dessert wine. It kind of reminds me, yeah, it, it's, it's very mineral. Very delicate floral notes, not a lot of fruit in fact. Yeah, it's very, very steely. This is kind of what I think of when I think of dry Semillon from the Hunter Valley. So this should be interesting. Let's taste. Oh, the recommended retail is $27.54, the 375 ml bottle. Let's taste. Well, there's certainly some sweetness on the palate. It's not super cloying. Um, you know, color wise, you can see uh, it's not 
not super dark and super intense. It's very, very fresh. Uh, this is really, really good. I think this is possibly one of the better sweet wines I've tasted in, from Australia uh, in quite a while. It's really, really balanced. Um, lots of good acidity, keeping it fresh, you know, moderate sweetness, not super sticky and syrupy uh, and cloying. You know, the wine finishes fresh, uh, which really, you know, promotes appetite. So I think that kind of sweet wine is a lot more uh, adaptable to different types of dessert. Um, uh, it, yeah, that's that's really, really excellent. And, and I think it makes sense that Semillon is so good in the Hunter Valley and Semillon is also such a good uh, variety for sweet wines. So, um, look, I, I think I'm going to give it to the, the Petrata Semillon in this one. Um, I think that that, for the recommended retail, is really an outstanding example of dessert wine. The Tanat I found fascinating. The Semillon possibly uh, is in a, a slightly sort of quiet stage, very neutral. Um, I, I need more experience with these kind of wines. Um, but I think, yeah, for a young wine, I, I probably expect a little bit more um, ex expression um, and personality. So uh, thank you very much, guys, for watching this video. Thank you, Phil, for the samples. I'm looking forward to tasting the three Shiraz wines, uh, possibly in the next edition of Let's Taste. Um, if you did like this video, please hit that like button and leave a comment below. Um, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can see uh, all the new videos as soon as they become available. Come visit me at intrepidwino.com and get in touch with me there. Uh, if you'd like to send me samples, I'm more than happy to, uh, to taste wines uh, and share my impressions. But uh, until next time, cheers.